hi everyone welcome to my youtube channel and in today's video uh, we're going to turn on some leds um, if you look at any arduino tutorial or any tutorial on getting started with microcontroller the first um, example that you would see is a blink example that makes an led go on and off using a pen on the microcontroller so this is a good starting example of how you would uh, start using a microcontroller get some coding um, knowledge using this and uh, proceed with making more complex projects so we're going to do something very very basic we're just going to turn on some leds then advance it and make use of this example to actually create a device that we're going to use in practical life um, so let's let's proceed so this is the example that you would uh, use in this case i'm using an esp32 uh, specifically a lolin d32 um, in the here the wiring is very simple you connect the positive of the led to three volts um, put a resistor in series and um, then connect uh, the end of the resistor to a gpio so when the gpio is low the negative part of the led is uh, uh, going to be connected to the ground so that means that the led is going to glow and when it is high the negative part of the led is going to be high so there is not going to be a voltage difference between the led and the led will not glow that's how you turn on and off an led using gpio so in our next slide what we're going to do is we're going to do exactly the same thing except we're going to use something called an end channel mosfet and we're going to use an led which is probably not controlled using a three volt this particular led is um, going to be controlled using a 12 volt supply so it has a, a resistor in series so basically the the circuitry is this so you just connect it to the end channel mosfet in this way where the gate is controlled using the gpio and then you connect um, this particular pin to ground and you connect the ground of the microcontroller to the ground of the supply so why you want to do this is so that even if the microcontroller is not powered on the mosfet is turned off and led is off by default and once you have your microcontroller gpio 19 in this case go to low it's going to turn off the led and once it is high it's going to turn on the led so this is a very simple way how you can you know control led using gpio so in our case uh, i'm going to use something called an end channel mosfet um, so this you can just buy off uh, ally express ebay amazon um, so the seller actually provides you with the circuitry here what you see is there is a ground and there is a pwm connection so the pwm connection is what actually is connected to gpio 19. this pull down resistor is already embedded in here and these are the dual mosfets so basically instead of one mosfet there are two mosfets so it kind of takes um, care of uh, powering high powered leds uh, without getting hot and uh, what you do is supply the positive and negative uh, on this end and then connect your load on this end and in our case we're going to use leds on this side so what i did uh, in terms of wiring is i just connected the ground to this ground so because we need something called as a common ground that all the negatives are tied together uh, so this way you know the referencing are easy and basically um, this way um, i am able to uh, control this led based on um, using this uh, mosfet so here are the few um, words that are associated with the mosfet and that is pwm control and uh, the frequency at which this um, operates so pwm stands for 
pulse width modulation. So if you have 0% duty cycle, it is uh, turned on 0% of the time and turned off 100% of the time. 20% duty cycle is it's turned on for 25% of the time and turned off for 75% of the time and so on and so forth. Um, so the thing is uh, the LEDs go on and off at very uh, fast rate and that is that PWM frequency that uh, the manufacturer had mentioned. Um, so basically that means that the um, intensity of the LED can be um, controlled by changing the duration of uh, the LED being on and LED being off. And because the frequency is so high that it human eyes can't perceive um, the flickering. So it's actually turning on and off at uh, very fast rates. And uh, that is how we're going to achieve dimming on these LEDs. Um, so the question now is why am I turning on LEDs? Why are you even watching this video? Is probably because uh, we built a composite tech in um, the summer. Um, so there were three different companies that we could choose from, Decorators, Trex, and Timbertech in the United States. Um, and we ultimately uh, went with uh, Timbertech, nothing about the other companies that turned us off, but it's just that this is the choice that we made. Now, the most um, compelling choice is actually, this is made up of recyclable materials. So basically we are helping the environment by choosing this, and this is not gonna go bad. Um, to, that's why we chose this. We chose a strong gray uh, from Timotech. And um, this is my dog checking out while the deck was built. Still, the railings were not on. But yeah, it looks beautiful. It looks like wood deck, and, but it's going to last forever. Um, so the question was, what lighting options do we have? Interestingly, um, Trax is the only supplier that is popular amongst the various um, uh, deck builders over here. So basically the choices were very limited. So you get some post lights and look at the cost. It's like $84 per post light. And um, these recessed uh, deck lights come in a four pack. So each pack, uh, each LED is worth $22. $22 for an LED is just ridiculous. And uh, then we have uh, a transformer, which is 120 bucks. So basically, this is just a huge amount that we didn't want to pay. So then I started shopping around and I ended up on Amazon. And this is one of the options that Amazon had. Um, so we chose uh, this particular LED. It comes as a pack of 16 LEDs. Uh, it comes in two different colors, the warm white and the uh, the cold white color, uh, we chose a warm white, gives a very nice glowing effect. And um, that's why we chose that. Um, so let's go into the detail of this particular LED. So these LEDs uh, come as uh, an IP67 uh, coated materials so is mostly plastic over here. Um, and it's completely sealed. So you can immerse this LED in water and nothing's going to happen. And this has, um, SMD LED, and uh, this is IP67 rated. Um, it comes with um, uh, these waterproof plugs that plug to each other. And uh, basically here you have a positive and a negative. There are only two leads in there and uh, they can be daisy chained. So basically it looks like this, but uh, don't uh, assume that this is in series. So basically you just supply a 12 volt uh, supply and the same 12 volt is passed on. So basically this um, LED is connected in parallel and that particular 12 volt is passed on to the next LED and so on and so forth. So this also comes with a power supply. So you can come in and put in some um, controllers that they sell you, um, but I was not happy with what they had in offer. Uh, so basically uh, we were to build something that is going to control this 12 volts that is supplied to these LEDs that are connected in parallel. Um, so basically this is what I ended up with. Um, so here you see there's an ESP32 over here and uh, that is powered by this 12 volts to three volts step down converter. Um, so basically the 12 volt is supplied over here and that is converted to 3.3 volts and that turns on this uh, microcontroller and then GPIO 19 uh, powers this PWM um, 
pin over here, you see the ground is connected over here, and then we have a common ground, and this 12 volt supply is then modulated using these MOSFET via this PWM signal, and that turns on and turns off this particular um, yellow wire over here um, that uh, powers this LED. So this is just one LED, I just pick this out of those pack of 16, but you can connect as many as you want, as much as your power supply can handle, and uh, how you're controlling the PWM. In this example, I have the PWM set such that it uh, goes to the highest intensity and then drops back to zero. It's like the basic you know, blinking example that we have in your um, microcontrollers, uh, except we use um, PWM signals or LED uh, C uh, function for ESP32. So what I did once I knew everything was working is put it into this uh, waterproof box. Um, so the the thing that you see here is there's a 12 uh, volt uh, power supply that is powered using this 110 volt AC line and that uh, is connected here. So basically this is the only 12 volt supply that I had in hand. Um, so this is a two amp power supply. Um, that is plenty enough to power a lot of LEDs. Uh, but um, I will eventually upgrade this to a slightly bigger or beefier 12 volt supply. Um, but then, you know, all the microcontroller is over here, the MOSFET, there are two different MOSFETs here because I'm using two different lines or two different GPIOs. Uh, that is two different sections on my deck I'm going to light using this MOSFET. Um, so here is the 12 volt to 3.3 volt step down converters. And these are the two different lines that connect. And in this case, I've just connected one LED over here to just check if everything is working. And I put it in this waterproof uh, uh, container that has this um, uh, transparent top. This transparent top is because I also have an LDR over there that measures the, uh, the amount of light that is around the deck. So I can turn on and turn off the, the light based on intensity of the light. Again, that is optional. Um, so uh, once uh, this is done, uh, the next uh, biggest issue was software. So yes, you can go and learn C, C++, MicroPython, and different environment in which you can actually code um, uh, ESP32, these great microcontrollers that are omnipresent in all Internet of Things devices. Um, but I chose to use ESP Home. It's great because it integrates with your Home Assistant. Um, so here, let's go over what the settings I have over here. Here I use two different GPIOs, GPIO 19, GPIO 21. You can set the frequency, that is the PWM frequency that you want to operate this at. And then depending on number of LEDs, I limited the power for each of these so that I don't exceed the two amp uh, power supply that I have. Again, these are optional. You can take these off and you can run it at full power as long as you know that your power supply can handle the demand of all the LEDs that are going to be connected. So then you just uh, then define two different monochromatic light. Um, so I call the, the lights on the deck as deck lights that is controlled by GPIO 19 and the stair lights were controlled using the GPIO 21. And this is just a pin 36 that I use for ADC that just has um, uh, LDR connected to one of those ADC channels. And here is just a card um, that actually uh, shows uh, this uh, graph shows the luminescence, that is the lux of uh, light that falls on the deck during the day. You see during the day there's high amount of lux and then goes down to zero. So you can use some kind of automation to turn on and turn off the deck lights depending on the amount of light that is around the deck. Um, again, these uh, lights show up as light components in Home Assistant because you define them over here, and then you can control the intensity, you can make it go on and off at certain times of the day. You can create a lot of automations based on this. Uh, you can make it blink, you can make it strobe, you can make it flicker. So those are the different things that you can do without even writing a single line of code, just putting in the settings of in-home assistant using ESP Home. Um, so I'm going to leave the links of uh, this particular setting 
um, in um, the description of this video. So you don't have to pause and look at what is going on here. You can go over there and leave a comment if you have any questions. Um, so let's talk about installation. So this is what the manufacturer uh, tells you again, these are in uh, English units or Imperial units. I just, I just hate using Imperial units because calculations are just crazy. But uh, anyway, um, I uh, use converter to convert inches to millimeters or centimeters to actually do this correctly. Um, so basically what you need is something called a force nut bit. You can use something called a spade bit as well. Um, the spade bit don't make a really clean cuts. Um, this is what one of those carpenters recommended to use. So that's why I ended up using this. So this force nut bit is 24 millimeter, which is equivalent to whatever this opening that they suggest to have. And uh, the stainless steel flange that goes over the LED actually covers this hole. So basically you have a little bit of wiggle room. Um, and then you just connect your drill on this side of the force nut bit and just drill a hole. So basically this is kind of intimidating because you spend all that money uh, building that uh, expensive deck, you know, the composite deck, and then you drill these holes. So you want to measure multiple times before you even actually uh, go ahead and drill a hole. So I had a scrap, so I tried everything on the scrap first. So what I did next was actually marked out the points on the deck. Um, so here I just use a cardboard template so that I create a hole at exact same location of every one of the steps. Um, and basically then you uh, connected the force nut bit uh, to the drill, uh, not a great drill. Uh, I was okay with letting go of this drill it was working all day um so here you want to make sure that the, you cut the hole in straight uh, manner you don't want to create a, a, a angle to the hole so take your time it creates these shavings that's fine um these are just you know the, the material that it is made up of um and uh, uh yeah, it takes a while. It's not as fast as a spade bit, but the cuts are much, 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 much cleaner. You will see in our next slide over here, the, the cut is really smooth and uh, uh, you take care of all these shavings, uh, vacuum them out and um, you use uh, this LED. So the, these LEDs also come with those black covers. So you want to take those LEDs, uh, the LEDs out of those black cover. And that black cover is probably uh, required when you want to do uh, like an embedded installation. Um, but yeah, so I took those things out and then um, uh, pushed those LEDs in there. It was a very snug fit. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is the first LED that I put in. Um, and it just like covers the hole perfectly, that stainless steel outer uh, flange. And it looks like uh, a very beautiful fit in, in that um, composite deck. So then I went ahead and installed a few more of these LEDs on the, on the stairs. Um, and these are connected in parallel and then uh, eventually connected to one of those pins on ESP32 uh, controlled using the MOSFET. Um, and uh, I put that box under the deck so you can't see the box, but um, th that is um, uh, really um, going to be controlled using Wi-Fi and our Home Assistant setup. Um, this is where when I tested all LEDs, making sure that they turn on. And even during daytime, you can see the LEDs uh, turn on. So that is a good indicator of how bright these LEDs are going to be. Um, so here is just a small um, video that I took to show the strobe effect in ESP Home. Um, so basically they go on and off. Um, and uh, then this is what it looks like in the night uh, uh, and it gives a very nice warm glow um, at the base of the deck and also on the stairs. And this is my dog checking out an abstract art uh, that my wife makes and you know the, the deck lights are right just behind it. And uh, these are some planters above um, that are lighted using these deck lights. Uh, and uh, this is just uh, uh, 
um, an image on one of those nights uh, where we have the lights on. Um, it's, it's extremely bright and we actually turn down the intensity much, much, much lower um, f when we are actually using it because it just is so bright. So now I'm going to leave you with a montage of a video of how this deck looks uh, during night and uh, it's not set to the highest intensity. It's just to show how it looks during the night. So enjoy and uh, please subscribe if you haven't.